Boink. Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Monday, which normally doesn't mean anything, but today it means that I'm doing a live stream where I create a track from scratch. And this is a continuation from last week, last Saturday, actually. This is this gets a little confusing, but basically the plan now, this was born of an accident, but the plan now is that um, every Saturday I'll have a live stream with guests. It'll be nice. And then Sunday I'm going to do a track from scratch with a solo stream, just me, kind of thing. And today is Monday, so you might be thinking, what the hell's up with that? And that's because yesterday I felt like I needed to sleep, so I did for a long time. And because last weekend was a bit nuts. The good kind of nuts, though. Good kind of nuts. So today, we'll be continuing uh, the track we were working on last week. And I'll give you a quick preview of what we did last week. And that's what it is. Mm. So, a couple things to consider while we're doing this. Um... I'm, I'm, I have my monitors on. One day I might get better headphones that I can use. I have a pair of Sennheiser 280 HDs, but they're old and beat up and the upholstery is busted. So that means that it's not, it's, it doesn't really work. But um, I'm listening at like 8% of my normal monitoring volume, which means that I can't, I'm not really sure what's happening with the mix. That's why every once in a while I'll listen to it at full volume and I turn off the mic. Um, yeah, but... Um, having listened to this, so I think my plan was at the end of, end of the last year when I made this was that I was going to um, I was going to make an intro to this, and then using the intro, I was going to add all a bunch of stuff on top of this because like this this just by itself is just some drums and some bass, but no like fluff or whatever on top. And I want the fluff, I want fluff on top. So, but I don't know what kind of fluff to add because I don't know what the intro is. And the intro is where all the melodic content will be from. So that's the plan anyway. Yeah. Also, um, my plan, my plan, that's my plan. But also, y'all should follow me on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Seamless Official, I think. I, I totally went to go figure this out earlier. Seamless. It's Official Seamless. Facebook.com slash Official Seamless. Go there, do that, and, um, like... I'm telling you this because this is where I announce that I am doing things. This is where all the news comes from for my stuff. I don't tend to inundate um, my YouTube channel with things, uh, except for like the most important stuff. Like, for example, you know, when I'm doing streams, I'll make a video saying, I'm streaming now. Just so people are aware, but I'm not going to make a video every time. I'm like, so by the way, next Sunday, this is sort of an event that's happening. All that stuff happens on my Facebook page. So go like my Facebook page and you will be informed. But yes, let's make some tracks. So, uh, what the hell key am I in? E. With drums that will have to be changed later, but that's fine. I'm kind of in a Rhodes mood. Let's try and make Rhodes from scratch. I mean, I could just use a Rhodes preset, but I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling uh, special right now. Uh, so let's... So I could, okay, I'm going to go to local EQ and like, and then pluck, and then, a kind of a xylophone thing going on. major chord inverted. I guess I can distort it a little bit. Hmm. Now, for some reason, I feel like I want to do this. <laughs> a little bit of pitch variation is fine, but too much is a bit weird. There we go. We got a tiny bit of like a kind of like a Leslie feeling, but without the massively weird panning. Oh, 
dog it is. Don't forget the washy phony, pan, washy panty thing that Rose do. Yeah, that's the that's the the legs the Leslie effect. I don't know that I want tremolo too much though. Let's see, we have, we have a tremolo. And we also have vibrato over here. I might I might change this patch later, but I just want to make a just a quick placeholder just for right now, so I can like make a kind of an intro. But I do I guess I want to. See, I'm an E, right? Yeah. Of course, of course, I went and played a whole bunch of stuff in F, so I made my tonic feel different. E. Oops. Uh, find for simply, and then go to the, not that one. So find this one. Yay! All right. Am I any? Why does that sound like F? Now why is this? Why are these in the audio section that they shouldn't be there? Channels, group selected. Where's group selected? There it is. Unsorted. There we go. Ha, ha. That's actually really funny. If I hit um, the key that I'm hitting to get this note, E, is actually E. It's the letter E. <laughs> and the letter D gets you D sharp. And C also gets you E, so that's kind of funny. So E is E. That's rather interesting. And irrelevant to our interests. So it's this. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like faking myself out with the, with the pitch variation. I hate it when I do that. All right. Doesn't sound anything like a rose at all. Like it doesn't even sound close, like a close to a rose. But that's okay. It's Remember, we are in we are in uh, six eight, so it'll be in the third step mode. Like a, a hat or something to That might be what I'm, what I'm thinking I'm trying to go for, is that my brain isn't acclimated to the 6-8 yet. Nope, that's totally what I wanted. All right. Uh, my 
god. Okay. Um. I'm going to leave the roads alone for a second because I think I actually have an idea of what I want to do. Like, for real. I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I have like, I have like this weird like uh, super like funky sounding bass like 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 uh, like literally a funk bass kind of sound. I would just do it with my bass, but I don't know that I can get my bass to sound like that. Like it's a real bridge pickup kind of sound. Oh, wow. oh I, I I think I could get this get this to sound like what I want to out of like a. Oh, the filter base. Oh, sorry. So let's go get one of my filter base presets. Not this one. Potentially this one. Let's put you in a... Future bish. <laughs> yeah. Working in six eight. Kind of, kind of. Wow, by unison, really that hard. Damn, look at it. Oh, it's this thing, it's the detune. Yeah. I'm not even, I have just, what have I just been changing? Like, what is this? Uh, not the right, okay. This guy here. Having ass problems. Yeah. I suppose the technical term for the actual time signature that I'm in right now is not actually six eight, but twelve eight, because it's still four pulses, 
but instead of there being eighth, two eighth notes in each pulse, there's three eighth notes in each pulse, which means a total of 12 eighth notes. So like what you're seeing here, these are not actually eighth notes. These are dotted eighth notes. For you see, that would be an eighth note. And then an eighth note plus a half, which is a dotted note. Dotted eighth note. <clears throat> That's what the dot signifies. It means plus one half of the value of the note. Maybe, maybe. I'm getting it's getting kinda old. <laughs> Perhaps not this sound. I'll come back to the sound later. It's a preset, so I can I can just bring it back. But speaking of presets, let's go look for this guy. From that talk I was having in the last stream about making notes that were too low. Nope. Nope. Jesus. Perhaps. Or something. What is this weird visual artifact going on? Look at that. It's gone now. Exploits causing weirdnesses, but the sound. Thank you. 
See, if I do that, though, these long notes don't really have much meaning. Although what I could do is... Uh, what this button does is it uh, changes the effect that any kind of enveloping has on the, on the parameter we're messing with. In this case, it's the frequency filter, the filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map this to X. So X is max. Notice that when I bring X down, the uh, envelope has less effect. So this is important because in FL, when we're using Harmer, or Citrus for that matter, we can actually change the, the X and Y value um, based on just individual notes. So that means that for these long notes, I'm actually going to lower the X value so that the envelope takes a longer time to... Um, well, basically, the envelope has less of an effect, which means that the, 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 the sound will sustain for longer. Or at least it's supposed to be the case. Yeah, so I gotta like, make it max for everything else, and then... Like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't actually change the speed of the uh, of the um, of the envelope. It makes it have less. Of, it makes the center less. So when this is going, it's going all the way down. This means that it's only going, and it kind of stays there. So that's what's going on here. So this could be a thing. Let's actually see what this sounds like right before the drop, because that's that's really what I want this to do, is I want it to match as much as possible. Doesn't match at all. That's okay, I can actually change the drop to match that now, because if we have, we have a we have like a, a melodic center, which is what's good, which is important. Because um, when I was making the drop, I was really just trying to make the sounds. I don't know how much I want to stick to this just yet. So if I were to make a, well, it's, I guess the intro would be that long. But so this is going to be, that's, this is the, the break and rise. So this is going to be the actual intro over here. Ugh, this is really not my, like, forte in, in terms of, like, writing, like, composition, this sort of stuff. This is like, like, I'm, I'm doing that collaboration with uh, Missing Identity, who won the last remix competition. And, uh, like, he's really good at this kind of stuff. Like, he just spits out funk like all the time <laughs> yes, because the envelope tab is the envelope wheel here is uh, a a one hundred to negative one hundred, which means that if I were to go back here, it basically reversed the effect of the um, uh, envelope here, which can be interesting. <laughs> That's what it sounds like if it was a square. Mm -hmm. So this is like the kind of main, I guess I want to... 
the, the, the sort of annoying part about this is that like I have a ah oh, ah. Oh. I was just about to get finished saying that um, massive. Uh, if I if I um yeah if I if I were to to make an ar- arpeggiator here, it wouldn't really fit because it doesn't really swing. Or does it do swing? I might have a swing. I might have a swing thing, but it, it um. So time, not really. Yeah. I could probably make it fit, like with the time I can make it fit, 6, 8. But that would just make it constantly, like, what are they, 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 would be really fast. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to manually make ARPs. Which is fine. I mean, I, I've done it before. It's just a bit, a bit of a departure from my usual process. Needs more IHGO. Just for fun, let's mess with the uh, the pluck shape. If you ever wondered how that one sound from that one Pegboard Nurse track could have been made. That a peculiar sound. So this is there's a there's a there's a piece of music in life. Um, it's called "In the Mood," and it was written by Mason Williams. I, I might be wrong about that. It has a pretty interesting history as a piece of music. It was one of the first pieces, one of the first musical things I've ever learned how to play as a child. In the mood, Glenn Miller. I might be totally wrong about this. Anyway, it's a. It, it was the story goes. It, it was a. Um, uh, the dude who wrote it was in the army, and um, they he wanted to write a piece of music that soldiers would actually want to march to, and uh, he ended up writing this one song called "In the Mood," and it had a very interesting rhythm. And I'm actually gonna I'm gonna utilize a little bit of that right now, and to make an ARP. Actually, I'll write. I'll, I'll I'll write what the actual uh, melody was. Yeah. Yep, that's what. It, that's pretty much what it was. It alternates this um, pattern here, where it's like you know, long, short, long, short, and it creates uh, a, a repetition of. Um, You'll you'll get it when I when I, when I do it. That's the pattern, and um, learning how to play that uh, when uh, did, we, did we get it? Did, did, did someone someone understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. When I when I finally learned how to play that, like when I, my brain could like process that that rhythm as a child, I'm like, oh my god, this is the best! And then you know, transposes to F. Well, I'm playing an E right now because it's you know, well, it's it's C. This is this is basically the inverted C C major chord. So then F would be up here. Then you know you it's blues, you know. That's I'm not gonna give a turn my studio, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, there's not really moderator happening right now. <laughs> um just, just one second.
<laughs> uh, I just checked Facebook. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Continue. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, outside of the musical history lesson I just gave you, um, I'm, I brought that up because I'm going to uh, use that as a template to create an ARP. And it might work. I wonder if YouTube is going to hit me for copyright for that. I wonder if it's even copyright anymore. That's pretty old. I'm not giving a studio tour. I'm not doing it. I mean, what is there to tour? You can kind of see what's in my studio. There's monitors behind me. That's not really, there's nothing. There's a picture. There's actually a picture of my studio on my Facebook page, like of what you're not seeing currently. So if you want, if you're really, really interested, you can go look at that. It's more or less exactly what's going on. So I'm trying to think of a, the, the best way to turn this to an ARP. I'm probably not going to use this, this sound like this either because it's, it's a bit much. What do I got for? <laughs> All right. Um, I don't really remember what I'm like. What this even sounds like without the kick of the snare, but I'm gonna. I hope I, I hope I don't I hope I'm not riding myself into a corner here because I do that a lot. <laughs> uh, yo, you're you you chat individuals. You are s specific individuals. 185 people watching this. That's like more than I got for yesterday's stream, which was not yesterday's stream, Saturday's stream. Yeah. Okay, um, I need, I need that Rhodes thing. Where's that Rhodes thing? That's not it. All right, uh, just because I don't, I really do kind of want it. I did want like an actual Rhodes. Let's find one that's really a Rhodes. Let's go to a keyboard. Rhodes. Look at that. It's because it resynthesized a picture of an actual, like, Rhodes waveform. I'm assuming that's what this is. This is one of the factory presets. It was, in fact, made by Nucleon. from the 60s.
So you, similarly, while we're talking about uh, In the Mood, one of the, one of the neat, neat uh, chord positions that they had done was an inverted 7 chord. It was, uh, it was all white keys, so it would have been... I don't think it was C and F. It was E or E and F. Anyway, goddamn keyboard. Mm. Maybe it was. Well, it's actually just make a seven chord. Maybe I'll get it right. So. See, that was that was the progression. So if I were to that might have been that might have been it. So if I were to, that's it. That was it. The inverted seven chord. That's what inversion means, by the way. If you weren't familiar with it, is that this is this is the seven chord, and um, I think it's technically a diminished seven because a major seven chord would be with a B because it's a major seven, minor seven with the with the, that's flat seven and then one more so it's i guess diminished i, I meant the terminology is a bit rusty but inversions are when you basically take the bottom of the note and move it up like that so that's the first inversion and a second inversion inversion be that and then a the third version you can do that with a seven chord because it has four four notes in it they're all technically still the same chord because it's the same four notes but it just it just changes what's at the root and you know the order of the notes So I wanted this. We're getting we're getting jazzy here. This is happening. We're getting jazzy. <laughs> and you know, okay, here's the other fun thing about theory is that it might technically be a six chord, because it's the six, I guess. Um, this, if we're still in C, the six, you know, it's A, it's a six chord, yay, cool. But the way the music theory works is that um, we have we have things like diminished and augmented, which are basically augmented, which is one above, one above sharp and one below flat, I guess, diminished, whatever. We also have things like double flats and double sharps because um, working when working in classical music and in jazz music, the writers really want to stay within a single key and certain notes and combinations of notes are not in that key. And instead of just being like, fuck it, just have a note there, that's what we're playing, whatever, they call them double sharps, double flats. So like, you know, uh, a C, C flat, there's no C flat, it's B. But like, if you had like a B flat, it'd be, you know, A sharp. But then if you wanted, you had an A, it'd be, wait, no, A doesn't work in this, we have to have B. So what is that? It's a double flat. It's a B double flat. It's A. Come on. But, um, and that's how, that's how that works in like the theory world for like super hardcore, like, mega rule laden things like classical music and jazz even though jazz was originally supposed to be like yeah fuck rules let's just make whatever we want to do let's, let's just play random ass sax solo that's what we want to do all right but. he he all right uh, maybe not here. Perhaps maybe later. Over here, but let's do the, the minor. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have a minor. That sounds about right. This order is weird. I'm not totally sure what I'm trying to go for. Cause damn, I don't even know. Let's see, uh, maybe I don't even want to use, don't even want to use a seven chord. I mean, I do kind of want to just to be special. Wow. 
That sounds off there because they're crazy, crazy notes they're having in the, in the bass. I guess a big world supposed to be different to be on the floor like that. Engage. Make it so. Yes, Captain. I'm I'm trying to do a Picard, but I just sound like the uh, the the battle cruiser guys from StarCraft. Even though they do they do say make it so and engage and all that because they're making fun of Star Trek, so it's kind of a joke that just went full circle. <clears throat> Okay, we're in a different key now. So we went to C. Let's see, what's the two See, sometimes when... Uh, When you make a chord and it's like too low, and then like, because you know if you play chords really, really low on like a piano and it sounds like mud, even though they're the right chords, you can make the same chord to space out the notes a little more. I'm trying to figure out the most effective way to do that. Let's put the A at the bottom, C on top, and the E above that. It kind of worked. But the thing is, uh, the funny thing about that is that the A happens later, so I guess it's just going to be a C major chord. Which I'm fine with. Do that, we make it an A minor. Right there. So we have to make it the most C chord ever, because that is the C, the C section. Ha. But then the A section is over here. Uh, man, I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, writing this stuff. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, I'm going to have a slightly different um, strategy here. I'm actually going to write the rise. Because I have, I have kind of an idea of what I want that to sound like. And uh, then I'll make something that fits properly with the melody that I have going on. That will be, it'll, that'll alternate differently, but I'll, can, I'll make that work. I can combine the two, do this. Let's go to the, the C part. Slide. And then I'll take the other half of this guy. Or no, actually I want I want the lots of notes version. Will be fills and stuff and like. Do I even have toms? Did I, did I put toms in this kit? I did not. I'm gonna need to do that. <clears throat> and these guys. Make you knock. You can begin the four count. And 
Uh, let's see, this was the this part. This guy, these guys here, kind of stuck with the progression, and then then over here will just be the E, and because this is a rise, they're rising here, so then we'll rise up the E. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'll, I'll do first half of that guy and then end and go right back into it. Yeah. All right, this is going to be a fill. There's going to be more fills in between, but this is this is a big one. Then pop, 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 pop. One, two, three, four. Then. Can even get louder. That didn't work at all. Damn. Okay. What about that sucked? It's got to go straight into Super Double. have a choke symbol. This is rigged. This is normal, though, you know, to hate everything you're doing while you're doing it. Because as I told a friend of mine while he was watching the stream later, everything, everything basically sounds like shit right up until it doesn't. So this is regular. This is normal. This is how this works. Ah, forgot, forgot that was there. Something's got to go over this, but I'm not sure what yet. What though? This really does inform like how the drop should feel. So like we can tell immediately that like what's happening in the drop doesn't really make sense anymore. And I'm I kind of I feel like I'm the, the core of this is going to stick with what's happening. And then um, so we're going to have to change the drop. You know, just the the arrangement part of it, the arrangement of the drop and like the notes or whatever. The sounds I still dig. There's some mixing problems, obviously, but that's something that will happen happen to be fixed. You know, later in life. Some people were suggesting that I break out the guitar, and I might actually do that. The thing is, though, is that like my strings are wicked old, so they're not going to sound because like the what um what uh when I'm thinking about adding like if I were to use a guitar like to do the kind of funky stuff, like I would need um a, sort of a close to clean tone, which won't sound very great with my strings. Although um jazz tones tend to be darker, you know what I mean. They even use like flat wound strings and crap, which are like super duper dark sounding, like not bright. 
not bright sounding guitar strings. So that mean that might be a thing that I do. Uh, man. See, this would be the part of the song creation where I go and listen to a whole bunch of other songs I have done what I'm trying to do to see how they do it and then to like kind of assimilate that style into what I have. Except that I can't do that while I'm on the stream because that means I, that means I would get hit with every kind of YouTube violation known to man when it goes up on YouTube later. So I kind of have to like let this work naturally. Mm. I guess you can make a riser. I mean, that's, I know there's going to be one. Uh, what kind of riser do I want to make? Let's do some weird FM kind of riser. Maybe I'll mess around with the guitar. I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm liking the idea more as it. More as I'm thinking about it. So I'm going to try something weird. I tried this a bit in an older, an older uh, track, but I'm going to do this in a newer track. So I'm going to FM output operator by a triangle, but I'm going to make it weird. I'm going to add an additional harmonics, like so. Now what this is going to do is um, the way that the way that uh, FM works is that it uh, changes the, the the pitch based on the change in slope. So, like if I if I were doing a sine wave, right, a regular old sine wave, and the change in slope is pretty gradual from one end to the other. So we get we get what looks like a pretty regular sine wave, like you know, interpretation of what the mode should be. But then when we put in a triangle wave, it starts to look like what a saw, a saw or a square wave should be. Why does it do that? And that's because the, the slope does not change, but then suddenly it's negative what it was. So that means it's, it stays at the top pitch and it goes to the bottom pitch immediately. So when I do something like this, it introduces some kind of craziness into, into the sound. And this translates interestingly into really, really slow um, FM. So if I were to like do this, for example. <laughs> so that's that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do here. See, what would it look like if I had a really, really like kind of a little bit of a since I can just bring it off and do <laughs> is running because I'm having so much fun. So what I want to do is I want to, is this the one that's turned? No, this is, this is the pitch I'm up about. All right. So lots, huge pitch change. Wow. Wow. All right. Turn that shit down. And now pitch to mod X. That's still too much. Um, what did I change into mod X if that wasn't? Oh, I changed the pitch of the output operator. That's not what I wanted to do. Still too fast. See, it's 48 cents. This is... So this should be really freaking low. Velocity. That's weird. All right, so... Whatever. All right, I guess that works. Let's mess with this a little bit, though.
See, what, what, I'm, what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to make a, a big ol' note here, but I'm actually going to begin this riser second, which means it's only going to be lasting for two of these bars. Then it's going to rise. And then it's going to stop short. So will the other one, but it'll stop at E, you know, because it'll end at the tonic. So this is where it'll end. Meantime, I will be rising the pitch value, or the, the pitch of the second um, operator. A bit. I'll have to stop rising sooner, but I guess I also have to have to stop it uh, rising because I want it to be solid. Like I said, it has to be max for it to be the right key. Uh, that's kind of what I want. I guess I'll find out if it sucks later. I guess what I want is the whole thing to actually be silent for last snare hit, which happens. In the middle, I believe. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm going to have another riser, which will be a harmonizer, which will do something similar, which instead of using the FM as the uh, modulation speed, like the, the thing that has modulation on it, I'm going to be using the phaser, which is something I've done before. But what I haven't done before is sneezed. <laughs> is I'm going to have the, the phaser modulation be the pitch value. The pitch kind. The frequency change. But this is gonna start way low. Why can't I hear that? Oh, because it's muted. I refuse to blow my nose. And instead of um pitch increasing, I'm going to increase the, uh, I'm going to increase the, multi, the, the harmonic multiplier, the detune over here. So, create an animation clip. I mean, of course, this has to. Oh yeah, I forgot, this is going to be four, four long. Yep. This one will, will increase in uh, in volume, so you, we won't really read, not, we'll be noticing it happening at the beginning. Thank you for that, FL. All right. You are fucking loud. That'd be real interesting. I'm going to change the shape to be extra weird. Look at that. Man. mind if we added, you know, freaking unison stuff. But oh, are we ever? 
This is going to increase over time. Do a whole bunch. See, this is this is the detuning, and what's actually going to happen is this is going to drop really fucking fast down to the right the right note, and. Uh, That should, that should be fun. And this is going to drop down as well. And then also when I do the uh, phaser automation, which I am, this is going to go up and then it's actually going to come back down and cut off right at this end here. <laughs> However, uh, because that's happening right there, I need this to rise up a whole bunch. Maybe here. <laughs> uh, maybe the unison should stay up. This is the unison, right? No, that's the, the harmonic detune. This is the unison. Let's have some unison remain, and then... Actually, the slide is kind of funny. Yeah, sure. And then this will shut up, like, right here. Of course, I had delaying and effects and crap, which means I'll have to automate the volume to shut off right then. Uh, huh. Interesting. All right, let's see what that sounds like with both of them engaged, which, I mean, they're still kind of dry. This guy is so loud. Like, I don't know why it's that loud. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, automate in some reverb. So it'll start with super wet reverb, it's huge. Yeah, that's fine. And then the reverb will shut up. What? No. Automation clip. And the reverb will shut up, and then the dry will come back and come in over time. Actually, the wet level will rise, too. So, like, rise and then fall. Rise from your grave. Then you'll rise and be regular. Now, with everything, Actually worked out pretty good. Like that's uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty uh, on point. Um, what do I want to do with the FM one though? I 
I have no idea what that sounds like a full volume, but I guess I'll find out later. Uh, let's put it in some kind of. I don't know, dude. I'll just unison it in citrus just to give it some. Uh, It may, it may do gross piece shenanigans, but not right now. I also am going to make this entire drum beat one big pattern so I can make minute changes to the beat. Because I do want to do that. Bam. I think actually right here it should be should be when the double <clears throat> oh well the uh, double time starts so that can be what I do. What happens next is that uh, this is get the double, but then this happens more. Like the additional kick in the in the rear could happen every other. So then this is when double starts. Yeah, okay. Thank God for six eight. what I wanted. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, I didn't want some toms though, but they're not, I mean, this particular drum setup is not at all like set up to mix toms. <laughs> I'm gonna put some in anyway. Let's, let's do just the DWs. I like the DWs. Just have all of them. Why not all the DWs? So now they're going to show up, and those times are going to show up in the, uh, the overhead, and then also its own channel, which is automatically routed into the drums for some reason, which is weird because I don't remember doing that. Uh, let's write some tom fills. See, there is a rim. There is a rim shot snare because like, that's the snare center. Actually, let's let's go look at all the articulations that Superior Drummer has for the snare. Let's go to mapping, and then here's all the snare articulations we have. Center, edge, rim shot, which sounds like that. A side stick, flam, roughs, with varying... Actually, let's go... And then trigger and control are two different things that they're, they're applied to uh, uh, electronic drum stuff. The cool thing about the flam thing is that it's actually recorded having done that, but I, I tend to just like to do that anyway. I like the centers. Edge, you know, like you're hitting it like near the edge, and then rim shot, 
is what that means when we hit the snare and the rib at the same time. In real life, that sounds it's that is a much more forceful snare hit, but for some reason in Superior Drummer, that's like the it's it's like they're hitting they're hitting the rim shot, but it's the rim and like the edge, not the rim in the center. The rim in the center is what people tend to do. And it uh it's a little bit more forceful sounding than that. No, you fool. This is making me Actually, I could do a snare build here because technically all this is happening with just your feet. I think I'm doing this right. That might that might sound weird. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That's actually kinda badass. Okay. Let's work with that. I might do some of that flam business I was talking about. I might want to incorporate the uh, electronic and the like, snare and kick right here just to kind of like inf enforce the buildup because the drop has uh, electronic sample reinforcement. Uh oh. Um, it appears this the stream is not transmitting. Don't know why. All right, I'm st I stopped. Uh, your stream, and I'm going to restart your stream. Everyone's flipping out. Chat. Working on it. Type in the chat. Working on it. Hmm. This is unfortunate. Um. It says I'm streaming. Ah, oh, what? Hello. Are we back? Uh, that's a big ass delay, but I think we're back. Okay. Hello. Hmm. This is gonna be interesting because the recording is not gonna show that they ever went offline, and it will in fact show me having you know trying to get it back online. But uh, that was weird. Don't know what happened, but we're back now. So I'm gonna keep doing what I was doing, which is trying to make this this, this fill work. <laughs> Where's the actual flam note? I don't even know where the, uh... It's... A? There it is. It's funny because I, wa I wanted to fit some, like, Tom fills in there, but that, that snare fill is really, bad, is really badass. Neat. I 
wonder if I could offset this so that it doesn't perfectly line up with the kick. Ooh, that was kind of neat. So what, what do you what do you um what do you guys like more? Do you like the uh, the original? Lined up snare. Or the uh, offset snare. I'm going to wait 20 seconds for that delay to happen for someone to give me an answer. Okay, so we got offset, offset, and both are cool. Offset, original, original, original. Okay, this might not have been the best plan. Um, original offset, second version is better, but the weird double snare is weird. The sneeze, original offset, offset on stage, uh, both at the same time. Offset, first one. Offset. I think offset's winning, but I actually kind of think I like offset anyway because it's kind of like a. I love that shit. I actually think my, this is like I kind of dig this because it feels like something that my dad would have done as a drummer because he's a he's a jazz drummer well he, he's more than just a jazz drummer like he does jazz and like rock and roll that kind of thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce um some yeah. Da -da -da. Uh, additionally, though, I want to fill in. I want to fit in um, these that. Although maybe not, because part of the um, part of the process for making a rise is that you do that thing where you EQ, you you do a high pass the whole track so that there's no bass, and then when the drop hits, the drop hits with the bass, and it's really heavy. It feels more heavier. Um, part of that I think will happen this way because I have, I'm doing just, just superior drummer drums and not the reinforcement drums, which means that when the drop does hit, it'll be all the much harder because it has the reinforced drums. So. Make the ending two beats thirds. People have a problem with the flam. Is the flam? That's. <laughs> I might actually be off. Like for real. Yep, I'm off. It's metal. How it doesn't loop because I'm not in the. It's a black metal shit. Why don't I just have a like a guitar solo on top of this? It'd be pretty interesting. What the hell? What the hell? Even tuning? Would I even be in the play? That so it's E, it's A, or it's E, e C, and A. So if I were in standard, because right now I'm tuning the drop C, and that makes it D. I can't tune my guitar to standard, the strings are too thick. I could tune it to drop A, or A minor. Open A minor. It's kind of low though, that might be too low. It wouldn't make a lot of sense. Um... Could do dad fad because E is A is the and E. I might do that. I think I could do dad fad. That's open D minor. Oh, 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 oh,
work did it like that 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 last part kind of confused the subject there oh it does it does, totally works why why didn't i think that worked i must have lost a beat in my head let's try the whole thing <laughs> anymore is why I didn't want to keep playing it because it like it doesn't make sense it kind of makes sense but it doesn't make it it's weird it's weird me out I'll, it'll not be weird when I'm done with the track obviously but like for right now it's weird but I fucking love this rise like I'm I'm much more about that than I was before hmm yeah uh, this this bit like I'm 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 only kind of like okay with like what actually happened here. I I mean I don't want to do like the the reggae like kind of like that 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 thing, but like I think I might have to because like I don't know what the fucking do otherwise. That's what I was doing with this thing. I was trying to find something not that to do with this, and then I ended up still doing it. I don't think I'm gonna keep this sound though. It's Rhodes influenced. It's like what it's what the Rhodes used to be for, but I don't think I'm gonna keep doing it. Of course, alternatively, I could do it with, a, with a guitar. I could do the the keys with that. Yeah. See, I have auto save on. That's what this is. That's what the scores is. That's what this is. See, this massive backups amount. Look at that. Look at that. I'm pretty good in terms of FL crashing. Although I haven't had FL crash in a very long time. Like a very, very long time, actually. And only when I've been doing like seriously unreasonable stuff. Like when I tried to open up 10 instances of Superior Drummer with max like loaded samples. That kind of shit. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a Super Chords preset and I'm going to plug it. I'm going to play this over um, one instance of the progression so I can find something that works. Uh, I know what the seven chord is now, so I can get rid of that. So not that. And this shit needs to be like major brought down. And this actually could probably use... Yes, that harmonic condom. 
Transpose. This pluck is not doing what I want it to do. What's phaser shape? What pluck shape? Guess I make this shorter. You know what? Fuck pluck. Let's do just regular freaking uh tool envelope. Tempo, please. That's kind of neat. And I'll make some reverb. And... That's a little better. Is there freaking griever before the distortion? No, okay. It was weird. Maybe not the delay though. Might be on something. Could be wrong. Um. Hey. It's kind of an accident, but I worked out pretty well. So I think what I might do is I might keep the same chord, but um, I do do another one, but make it only the lower versions of it. And then, then. Guys, and your sneezings. If you're thinking something's off of that last chord, because something is off in that last chord, I included the seven, the minor seven of A, which is G, which is the minor three of our root, root tonic, which is root, root tonic, which is redundant. E. It's the same thing I did up here. I put the seven on top. So I'm going to fade this in over time. 
which will be interesting. I guess I'll have to use the second filter to do that, which means I need to do this or that. Also, do is I'll make it so that uh, in the beginning there's only hats, and then the kick pattern can pop in during the second iteration. Maybe I'll do some filtering in of this guy. I think I also want to mess around with that pluck because I was screwing around with the pluck on the main sort of progressive thing. It sounded kind of neat. Evidenced by the fact that it's plucked now, which it wasn't originally. Distortion on the chords is getting a little weird when it's on the lower uh, filter settings. So I think what, I mean, what that means for me is that I'm not going to automate the internal uh, filter, but I'm going to automate a filter on top of it all. Which of course means that this is going to forever be low, so I'll just turn it to a different a custom pattern, which will be by default nothing. And then I'll automate a free filter before the EQ. Link to controller, filter to frequency. I think I figured out what's throwing me off about this last section here is when, when the snares actually start to become audible, it's, it starts to sound like it's off. So I need to, um, I'm going to accentuate the beat of the main kick and actually start these louder. See, it still sounds weird. To make the second one of the the one thing one of the one of the one of the three basically make the three. Louder. That seems to make it worse. Okay, maybe the opposite. Make the first one louder. God damn it. Ooh. 
The other option is just to put a like a, a snare on the ones to ensure that kind of worked. <laughs> oh my god, 7.30. Okay, um, I'm going to listen to this whole this thing the whole way through at max volume so I know what things sound like. and Including the, the drop, as unrelated as it may be. So let's do that. All right, so parts of that sounded way better than I thought it, did, than I thought it would. And certain parts, in terms of mix failure, have been illuminated in terms of, like, like the weird, the intro bass. But, like, I'm, I'm way more into this than I was a minute ago. And I've also decided that at maximum volume, my problem with the snares aren't really there. So I'm leaving it the way that it is with the... the and, uh, yeah. So this is good. We made pretty good, decent progress. So now, um, the next time we do this stream, which should be next Sunday, which uh, I guess is the 5th of January, um, we will begin to, well, I'll take what I've done with the intro and I'll make the drop fit. Like I'll include these elements in the drop and uh, we'll make it a little bit more full sounding. And I'll also m mess with the arrangement so that it you know, fits with the actual progression because there is one now, we have a progression. I like that we have a progression. So things should be a lot better next week. You know, as you know, time progresses. But I do, I do dig, I do dig. What's happening here? This is the first. Like, I've never written anything this funky before. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Uh, all right. Um, resampled sneezes would be sweet in the buildup. I'm just, I'm just imagining like a, a time stretch, like ah, choo! like right before the buildup. <laughs> Maybe that could be the drop, like the the, the pre-drop. You know, instead of, instead of having like the the Skrillex says, oh my god, or like that one track from Zomboy, it's like, get him. We could have a sneeze. That'd be good. That'd be great. Okay. All right. I am declaring, I'm declaring today's stream having strummed. We strummed today. It was good. Um, I'm going to go hang out at the, uh, the plug room, which is plug DJ slash seamless, seamless, shameless. I'm Sean Connery now. Seamless slat, uh, God damn it! Plug DJ slash seamless dash EDM. I believe that's actually the link. Yes, yes, it is. Very good. Okay, I say that because I can't actually link in the chat because the links are disabled. 
Not a thing I know how to do because it's that's, that's Sean's territory. I have to ask him what I had to do that so I can moderate my own chat. You know, that'd be nice if I could do that. If I knew how to do those sorts of things. Uh, so yes, like I said, next week's streams will be on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday will be the, a guest stream of some kind. I actually don't even know who's going to be on this week. And um, Sunday will be the uh, track from scratch stream. This thing, a continuation of this. I'm going to make sure I save it. Save, save, save. It's been saved. And yeah, so if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And go like my Facebook page so that you can be informed of these things when changes inevitably happen. And as usual, have a nice day.